is Jack. By the way, um, you won't see it now. Um, my name is Jack, and I'll be chatting to you today on this little tour of the Black Forest. Our driver this morning, ladies and gentlemen, a man called Miroslav. Now, I don't know if you, you can call him Miro if you like. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but he is renowned. Miro is renowned as the greatest driver in the whole of Western Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so put your hands up. A round of Thank you very much. And as I say, that's the Rhine River to the right of us. People are taking their dogs for a walk. And um, it's quite wide, the river, quite high still, as you can see. But it is beginning to go down. So we are hoping for some semblance of normality fairly soon here. Yeah? But it might take a little bit of time. Anyway, we're headed for the back forest. There's a, there's a city to our left, by the way. It's called Breisach, uh, on the eastern banks of the Rhine here. Breisach, um, a little city, 16,500 inhabitants, uh, sitting with half, halfway between Colmar and France, which some of us will be fortunate enough to visit this afternoon, and Freiburg in Germany, which we'll pass through a little later on this morning. And um, it's about 15 miles away from those places and about 40 miles north of Basel in Switzerland. Now, some of you might know of Basel as Baal. But don't worry, <laughs> both the same place. Um, Baal is the French pronunciation and Basel the German. We tend to call it Basel over this side of the river, you see. And uh, anyway, that's about 40 miles to the south. <coughs> and this little city, Breisach, ahead of us now, um, the name Breisach goes back to Celtic times, you know, those Celts. You know those Celts. <laughs> they were all over the place and they came here as well about 3,500 years ago actually. And they call it Breisach. Breisach actually meant breakwater or surrounded by water. That was the case, you know. Uh, you'll see a hill soon as we go around this round about now. Look to the left, a little bit to the left there. Can you see there's a cathedral on top of a hill? Can you yes. see that hill? Yes. Cathedral up there now. And that's the Cathedral of St. Stephen's. And uh, that hill on which it stands, it used to be surrounded by the waters of the Rhine River until this hydro engineer called Johann Gottfried Tuller, he came along in the middle of the 19th century and he straightened and narrowed the Rhine River so that people didn't have to paddle to work anymore. And they were very, very happy. And um, the Cathedral of St. Stephen's, named after the first Christian martyr, it's a uh, work starting on that cathedral, you know, at the end of the 12th century. And it's continued until the end of the 15th century, 300 years it took to build that cathedral. I think they were working on the principle of one brick a day. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were home for a beer. <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, that was a little fib. And um, the fact of the matter is, you know, these buildings very often took hundreds of years to build. Work was suspended for anything up to a hundred years because of wars, because of lack of funds, because of diseases like the plague decimating large numbers of the population. And I'll come back to that in a minute. But first of all, look to the left, and you see that ugly building there. Look at it. God, that's ugly, isn't it? It's neither Romanesque nor. Um, nor Miroslav wants to stop in there. Are you <laughs> it's the, it's the, it is the a very important building. Actually. It's the, it's the Badisha Wine um, Centrum, um, and it's a, the biggest wine storage complex in the whole of Europe. Huh? Look at it over there. Look, full of, full of wine. Imagine being stuck in there all night. <laughs> it's the stuff of nightmares, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But Mira might be stopped on the way back. All right, fine. All right. Anyway, uh, the British invites him. Anyway, um, good. It is the, the it's the third biggest in the whole of the world. Whole of the world, actually. There are two big ones on this planet. Uh, one of them is in South Africa, and the other one, California. California, of course. And um, so, um, good, wonderful. Um, back to that uh, cathedral, took 300 years to build. It has, in this case, you know, um, resulted in the fact that the two towers of St. Stephen's Cathedral there were built in totally different architectural styles. The first one having been built in the, in the old Romanesque style of architecture, whereas the second one was built in the later Gothic style of architecture. And um, 
Yes, I do. Uh, well, you might have a chance to pay a visit. Well worth a visit. It, um, it has survived the centuries, survived the Second World War as well, just about. Um, was very damaged during the Second World War. At one point, they were wondering whether they'd bother to rebuild it at all. Eventually, they did. They restored it to its former glory. You'll find there a fresco. If you did pay a visit, you find a magnificent wooden carved altarpiece um, by a man called Hans Loy, and also some frescoes by Martin Schoengauer, all of which go back to the 15th century, and uh, they have somehow survived, and um, well worth a visit, should you have the time or the, and the inclination to do so. Um, Preisach itself, you know, has a very turbulent history behind it as well. Over, uh, over the centuries, at different periods of time, it's belonged to the French, to the Prussians, the Austrians, the Holy Roman Empire were here. And then in 1805, Preisach became a part of the newly established state of Baden here in southwest Germany. And in 1952, it was that Baden was merged with the neighboring state of Württemberg. So we find ourselves now in the state of Baden-Württemberg. It is a bit of a mouthful, I know, but I'm sure if you practice amongst yourselves, you'll be fine by lunchtime. <laughs> Baden-Württemberg, yes. Um, good. We, as we travel along here now, you see there's a group of hills to our left. Um, and ahead of us here, it's a volcanic group of hills. It's called the Kaiserstuhl. It has one of the warmest climates in, and um, worth traveling around, driving along the southern end now. And uh, you find that the uh, south and uh, southern slopes and the western slopes, especially covered in vines, other parts of the Kaiserstuhl uh, are also um, uh, uh, famous for their rare species of plants, including 35 different kinds of orchids can be found on this little uh, group of hills, the Kaiserstuhl to our left. Now that we've just entered our first village here in the Rhine Valley, and this is the village of Iringen, Iringen. And let me tell you, Iringen is the capital of Germany. <coughs> Do I sense that some of you don't believe me? Yeah. All right, you're, you're right in thinking. It's not, of course, the state capital of Germany, but it is the sunshine capital of Germany, you know, because they've discovered after years of research that this little village here has uh, more sunshine hours than anywhere else in the whole of Germany. And the sun is out to prove it today. <laughs> it also gives us a chance to have a look at village life at uh, 8.30 on a, on a Monday morning. And as you can see, it's absolutely buzzing here. <laughs> life in its, in its essence. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're, there's some roadworks going on here now, so we're going to have to take, um, we're going to have to go up there. Uh, we're going to have to take some um, detour diversions, you know. And you're going to see a part of Eeringen that nobody, no other tourists have ever seen <laughs> in their lives. These are the, yes, the badlands of Eeringen. <laughs> and uh, there's the chase there on the right hand side. And uh, yes. Not much happening in these villages, you know, and uh, rather quiet they are, you know. And, uh, but, uh, interesting. If you could see somebody. <laughs> 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 she wasn't impressed. She, wasn't, she didn't like me, I don't think. <laughs> anyway, so let us continue. If you went along, these are the back streets of Eerie, you know. If you went along the main street, you'll find that it was um, covered, uh, full of um, uh, hotels, restaurants, guest houses, um, catering for the tourist industry. You know, these little villages, they're, they're very popular, actually, amongst their visitors. Um, they're great places to spend as a base for day trips into the Black Forest, over the river there to France. Switzerland is not so far away, and they're pretty little villages in their own right. And, uh, but they do tend to be a little bit, um, a little bit sleepy, some of these villages. So if I may give you a word of advice, if you do see somebody waving, waving from the side of the road, wave back at them, you're probably the most exciting thing that'll happen <laughs> this week. <laughs> I have a little sympathy. <laughs> 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 